Welcome to Crocodile MTG, your home of competitive, constructed play in the modern, standard, and legacy formats. Today's video was brought to you by the wonderful supporters over at Patreon. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jordan with Crocodile MTG and I am here to bring you another Magic the Gathering video. Today we are playing a draft, a Ravnica Allegiance draft on Magic the Gathering Arena. So we're going to go ahead and start off. We are on the draw, I believe. Uh, we're going to start off with this Orzhov Guildgate and turn two, play the Rakdos tramp, uh, Trumpeteer. And then hopefully we can be quick and aggressive, and then our lightning threats are good enough to pay off. Uh, if you look to the right of your screen, you're going to see our deck list that we previously drafted. Uh, this is match number one. All right. Some green-black going on here. I like it. Uh, let's play this Rakdos Trumpeteer. I don't like the death touch on that. Drew this Mortify and also the Under City's Blessing. Uh, I'm sorry, Under City's Embrace, which is pretty good. Um, I have three removal spells in hand, which is absolutely fantastic. Orzov was really nice. It has some quick aggression. Uh, early game, it has a lot of removal card uh, removal spells in the Ravnica Legion's format. And overall, I'm just pretty happy with how the draft went. All right, so my opponent's attacking in here. I'm just going to swing right back at them. Now, a little thing awkward. We are playing Rakdos Trampler. Rakdos Trumpeteer. But we are not playing Red. Uh, that may have been a slight mistake on my part. Originally, we were going to be uh, Mardu. Uh, red, Black, and White. Alright, so our opponent's got some stuff going on. We can at least uh, sack this Trumpeteer to the final embrace if we need to. Hmm. Take a couple small points of damage here. Alright, so Obligator was pretty good here. I'm just going to pass the turn back. See what our opponent tries to do here. All right. So how I'm going to block here? I'm going to trade this uh, oligarchy uh, with the enforcer, and then I'm going to tuck the trumpeteer uh, with the fiend. But I'm going to actually sack the trumpeteer. So I'm going to destroy that sacking the trumpeteer and the reason for that is because I don't want fiend to deal the one damage to the infiltrator so we'll see what our opponent can do here so we're both gonna get one one flyers and then all of my infiltrator is still around And we'll see what our opponent's follow-up is. So we'll move the combat. I think I want to swing with both here because I want to play the blade jungle, uh, blade juggler. Could just sack here also. I 
Yeah, I'm gonna sack. I'm gonna get in three damage. And now I'm gonna play the shoveler. And I'm really looking for lands here. And there it is. Uh, Knight is the largest creature in our deck. Or largest card in our deck. So we'll see what our opponent does here. So I think I'm just gonna mortify and then spawn for six. Exile, target card from a graveyard, draw a card, or exile. Target player exiles a card from the graveyard. Alright, so I don't really see a benefit to this. Okay. We're gonna draw a card. It could just be a cycling mechanic for them. Alright, so our opponent is attacking in. I'm a little surprised about. Especially since they're gonna be going down to six. I mean going down to four. Unless they have a removal spell here. They might have a sacrifice ability. I don't know, they were they were hovering over their fiend for a second. I think that's fine. I'm just gonna follow up with the messenger, second main. And if they decide they want to trade here, all right, and gains first strike. Okay. I mean, our opponent's running out of cards, so excuse me, my voice there is uh, being goofy. I'm really surprised they did that, because if I kill their fiend at some point, they can just deal one damage to that. Ooh, I almost played the wrong card. So I'm surprised how our opponent attacked there. I mean, a block there. Alright. That's fine. I'm assuming our opponent swings in here. now. Alright, I guess they're getting a little worried about their life total. Rightfully so. Alright, so we're going to start with an attack. And the reason for that is because we'll probably, yeah, I was going to say, I'm assuming our opponent blocked like that. Uh, we're just going to be able to play out this embrace and kind of reset the board. But I actually don't have to. I'm just going to play this. Uh, I'm going to take their death touch, sure. So we'll see. Let's see what we can do here. We'll make our opponent sacrifice that. We'll swing in for two. Uh, we'll run out our noxious. Oh, my bad. For some reason, I thought we only paid one for that. All right, run out our gutter bones here. All right, we got a Rakdos trumpeteer on our opponent's board. Not gonna care too much about that one. And our opponent concedes. 
Alright, so we won game one. And we're up to silver. This is a ranked draft, I forgot to mention that. Uh, before we get too far into game number two, I want to give a big shout out to all our sponsors. Uh, we have Manitraders.com, your number one place to get your best. Uh, it's the best card rental service on the MTG market. I highly recommend them, and you guys should definitely check them out. Uh, we also have Ink Gaming, which is an affiliate of ours. They have really awesome uh, play mats. You can customize them, make them your own. You can uh, save money with both Mana Traders and Ink Gaming using the promo codes listed at the top of the screen. Uh, let me think. All right, we're gonna keep this. Uh, we also have all our patrons. So if you want to become a patron of the channel, you can check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash crocodilemtg. And if you like the content we produce here, you have the option there if you'd like to donate. It, all the money goes right back into the channel. Uh, we really appreciate it. We're working on getting some new awards for the Patreon. Um, so we're going to... We're working right now with uh, Inkling Customs to design a cool new token for the channel. So once those tokens are available, we're going to put those up for Patreon awards. Um, it's just something I can give you guys. If you, uh, A lot of people like the t custom player tokens. So that's just my... Uh, playing out a bunch of stuff here. Sorry for the distraction. So I'm going to swing in here. Okay, so I think I was saying something about player tokens. Uh, Inkling Customs, we're working with them to make a player token, and we're going to be giving those out in our patron awards uh, for probably tier 5. Uh, we'll give out awards quarterly. Uh, we're working on kind of re reconfiguring our Patreon system at Crocodile MTG, so uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, maybe not right now, but sometime in the near future. And I'll keep you guys all updated on uh, when we get the tokens figured out. Alright, that's a pretty good card. Drill blood our opponent here. A uh, 4 4 that can't be blocked, or a 4 4 that can deal damage to us. So our opponent only has 4 mana right now. Uh, I think I'm still going to take the Crusher here. I think he has too many adapt cards to uh, kind of undermine that. So what's really nice here is I'm going to wait for him to attack. And once Kitchen Karn attacks, we're going to actually use the uh, Oligarchy to sacrifice the final payment to kill the Shark to Crab. And then we're going to be able to block this Petromander. So we're going to kind of two for one our opponent. There's that. We're gonna sack our oligarchy. We're gonna afterlife one get a spirit, and then we're gonna use that spirit to block the petromander. And our opponent didn't even see it coming. All right, so we drew a land. Yeah, so I think we're gonna get this game, guys and gals watching. Uh, thank you guys for watching, by the way. Uh, I truly enjoy Magic the Gathering Arena and being able to play Magic Arena, Magic Online, uh, kind of hang out with all you guys. It just brings absolute joy to my uh, life, you know, being able to play Magic and being able to share it with all of you. Uh, you guys truly make the community great, and I really appreciate all of you, so thank you for being part of Crocodile MTG. Alright, and that's it for our opponent. Man, this Orzhov deck. Doing some work. 
Ooh, we got a reward. Boom. Got a watchdog. That's pretty nice. We're also one win away from our uh, 15th win this week, so we're going to get a pack we're going to be able to open at the end of the... Uh, it's not a stream, but end of the recording here. I do apologize for not having the draft up. Uh, I know the drafts can be kind of fun to watch. Uh, I was eating dinner <laughs> during the draft, so I didn't want to put me eating dinner on the YouTube channel. So, all right, this hand looks pretty solid. Uh, we're gonna be able to turn one Twilight Panther and then turn two, most likely Drill Bitter opponent. So Mortal Wombat is our opponent this game. Oh, also something I noticed. My avatar changes every single time. Uh, hello. Uh, every time uh, we play a different match, my avatar changes to a different character. Let me know. I haven't really looked into it. Is that something new that MTG Arena does? Or is that something that... We can change. It used to be Teferi, is why I ask. Hmm. All right. So our opponent's deck is looks like mono red. No, it's splashing white. So it looks like a red white deck. Based on our hand, I think we have to take the Gatherer here. But the Angelic Exhaustion kind of looks appealing too. I am gonna take the. Uh, goblin gathering here. Oh yeah, we drafted a, a Angel of Grace. You might have uh, seen that in the description to the right of the page. Alright, hopefully we get to keep attacking in here. I was going to say, hopefully our opponent's deck is just extremely slow. Uh, decline. Alright, so if our opponent drew a land, which I'm assuming they probably did, yeah, they're going to be able to play out. Oh no, so many goblins. Oh no. Alright, um, what do I do? I attack with an unblockable. Wait, does he only make three goblins? Yeah, I still, I'm still gonna attack. Put Panther in the grave. Uh, the reason for that also is because I'm gonna play out this imp, and I wanted something to gain us life. All right, so we're gonna be pretty aggressive with our opponent here, and I think we're gonna be able to pull ahead. had a pretty good draft so let me think play block sack as good as this card is I think I'm gonna sacrifice it I don't think our opponent has any removal so I think that's going to be the game. Our opponent just said good game. Alright, so our opponent's just attacking with everything. Alright, we're just going to block here. 
I mean, they hit us for quite a bit. The reason I didn't block like something bigger and use this uh, final payment is because I want to be able to sacrifice uh, the forbidden uh, spirit to this. All right, good game of fun. All right, we are currently three and zero in this Orzov draft. There's our Ravnica Allegiance pack for our 15th win this week. And all right. Uh, let me know how you like this setup too. Uh, I went through and revised how the Crocodile MTG kind of recording setup is. Uh, so as you can see in the upper part of the banner, I have some information about our sponsors. On the right hand side, I have not right hand side, the little yeah, the right hand side of your screen uh, will be the Crocodile MTG logo, some information about our um, our ways you can get a hold of us. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, we're just kind of all over the board right now. So uh, just kind of take a look over and see if you guys uh, enjoy this layout a little bit more than our past layout. And let me know what you think. Uh, we're going to mulligan this, I think. It, it's pretty appealing with the priest on turn two, but I don't want to risk. And this isn't much better, but we're going to keep this one. Uh, we're in search for lands at this point. Hopefully our opponent isn't aggressive. Okay, turn two, Rakdos Trumpeteer, even though we can't really uh, take advantage of that. Take advantage of the ability at least. Alright, Priest on turn two. Very good. Uh, no attacks. Actually, maybe I should have attacked there for one. I don't think I'm going to block. No blocks. Scry Griffin. So, that seems pretty good. See if our opponent attacks here. Seven, go down to nine. Target player. What am I doing? Sack two creatures, any number of target players. Loses two life and sacks a creature. Submit. Sack, sack. And then I add two mana to my... Alright. And I can't do anything with it. Swing in for one here. Alright, we're not in a bad shape. Do we gain two life? No, our opponent just loses two life. Chillbringer. Alright, I like a land here. Yeah, right on time. Alright, grasping throw. Boom. I feel like we're pretty far ahead in this game. Even though we're like, it looks like we're behind, we're not behind. I think what I'm actually gonna do here is play Infiltrator and leave up final payment. Ah, oh, what is this? That's garbage.
All right. Well, I'm glad I uh, infiltrator got that and not not something else. I'm gonna block here. He's gonna hybrid act or activate hybrid here, and I'm gonna final payment in response. Let's see what our opponent does here. Our opponents haven't really had a lot of uh, counter, not counter magic. Uh, they have had counter magic. They haven't had a lot of removal spells, which surprises me a little bit. Seems pretty good. Oh, I don't have a counter spell. All right. So we have this Mortifying Hand, which is good. Our opponent just 3 for 1 does, because that one card... Well, it's 6 for 1 does, actually. What is this crap? Oh, no. Oh, we're not running hot here. Why can't I activate this ability? Sack two other creatures. Oh no! I thought I was going to be able to sacrifice in response. Oh no. I think we're just dead now. I thought we were in a good spot. Oh no. Um... What do we mortify here? I want to say a priest, I think. Oh, no. Ooh, we saved ourselves another turn. Alright. <laughs> Let's see if we can get through this. Alright, we're top decking here. Ladies and gents. Oh my goodness! Oh, we pulled the carry in. Oh! Alright, so our opponent's gonna lose Chillbringer. Oh! And we gain two life. We're stabilizing! Oh no! That's a good card! Alright, well, I'm gonna block. Let's top deck another good card! Oh no, we're gonna die. Oof. Alright, that was our first win now. I mean, that was our first loss. Let's, uh, let's get through three or four more games, guys. Three or four more games. Uh, this seems like a great hand. I'll start with an Orzov Guildgate playing uh, Oligarch. How do you pronounce this? Oligarch. So we'll play an Oligarch turn two. Alright, our opponent took a scry. How do you guys feel about the new sky, uh, scry rule? Uh, let me know down in the comments. Are you excited? Uh, we're probably going to do some MTGO testing uh, next week. I think it's next week. Uh, yeah. This 
Spectral Cylinder. Uh, we're going to be doing some MTGO testing next uh, week. Not next week. When, whenever the mulligan rule changes. I forget what day it is. So we're going to kill that. I think we're gonna cities embrace this. I know we can wait. I'll attack all, and then I'm gonna kill the earth on it. Oh, quench. All right, what don't what don't we like in this hand? Uh, we don't like flying. I don't really think I care about the gatekeeper. We have this mortifying hand too. I don't really think. Hmm. I'm gonna take the spy here just because it can affect multiple creatures. Hopefully we draw a land and we can either Angel's Grace or a Thrall. Thrall feels really good. Oh, our opponent has a punch up now. Gross. Alright, I'm going to attack with the Juggler here. See if our opponent wants to trade. No? Alright. Um, I'm going to play the Grudion. I don't know if I'm saying any of these names right. Alright, so our opponent's gonna quench here. Uh, we're gonna be able to block with Oligari. Alright, I don't care about that. Let's see if our opponent wants to trade anything. So we do. We got some afterlife folks on the battlefield. And we'll see. Our opponent's going to. Hey, right, they're gonna fight. But then I'm gonna afterlife one. And this angel grace is just lethal. Alright, I'm gonna start by attacking, I think, and see what our opponent does. Alright, I'm gonna afterlife one here. Actually, we could probably just run out of the world here. Alright, we have a bunch of flyers. Ah, Pixel West falls to Crocodile MTG. Ooh, we went up right And boom! We got a volcanic dragon. This is some sick artwork. Chris Ron, it's pretty good. It looks like a Valica, and it looks like a uh, volcanic dragon's like spewing out of a Valica. Is it a Valica? What's the backstory behind Valica? We have a bunch of white cards and a Twilight Panther. Let's get her, get her done. Get them with the uh, Twilight Panther. Thank you guys for uh, watching. I really appreciate your viewership. I really appreciate you being part of the Crocodile MTG community. And if you're sitting there going, "What? I'm not part of the Crocodile MTG community," well, you are, because you're watching this video. So we appreciate you, and I hope you uh, continue to enjoy my content. I hope you come back and check us out, and thank you so much for watching.
Uh, if you want, check out our awesome sponsors. Uh, we got Mana Traders up there. We have Ink Gaming. And we also have all our uh, patrons at Patreon. Uh, all of you guys are absolutely amazing. Twilight Panther's going to have to win this game. Uh, everyone there is absolutely amazing. Really supportive of the Crocodile MTG community. And I really love every single person that sponsors uh, the content here. It's absolutely a blessing being able to play Magic for you guys and you know just having a community come together and really enjoy what we do here. And we're able to just you know have fun, chill out, play some arena. And I just I really love you guys. Like you guys are seriously like I don't want to sound all like emotional, but you guys seriously I seriously enjoy the MTG community. You guys are always supportive. You guys are always amazing, and you guys just never give up on anyone. Thank you guys for just being amazing uh, all around the world. Everyone is absolutely fantastic. So in this match, we have a Twilight Panther and a bunch of planes. We're facing a troll. Hopefully they don't troll us later when they find, a, find this video. Ooh, we drew a mana <laughs> source. All right, so what do we do now? Nothing. Is that menace? Yeah. I'm gonna play some Noxious here, and then I'm gonna Sky Teether. Our opponent's uh, Clan Wrecker. Our opponent, I feel like, is doing something. Like they were like... They're like, keep looking at their... Not guild gate, what are these? They're not clues, lockets. Lockets. They're gonna run out of artifacts. They probably won't, but... Every single Ravnica set, they've had a different, like, artifact. Last time, when we went to the gate crash and Dragon's Maze and all that, there was, uh... There was clue stones and, uh... Key stones and it was a crazy mess. It was around when I started playing. I think my first FNM was a uh, gate crash pre-release. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a pre-release. I didn't know what a pre-release was at the time. I played my first FNM at a great gate crash. It, it was the FNM gate crash was leaving, and when I did uh, play at that event I was playing a janky mill deck that had like M11 cards in it or something like that and it was highly illegal for the tournament I was playing in um, needless to say they were really cool about it they taught me all about standard they being my uh, the people I was playing with I'm gonna actually sacrifice this creature here We're talking about FNM Friday Night Magic Gate Crash Release Night was my first FNM. I was playing a janky mill deck that was FNM not legal, meaning it wasn't, it didn't have standard cards in it. And then uh, I got quote unquote disqualified, like I couldn't win anything. But everyone was really cool about it. Let me read this guy real quick. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library until you reveal a creature card. Uh, base power becomes twice that card's power, and its base toughness becomes twice that toughness. Put the revealed cards on the bottom of your library in any order. Ew. Uh, I'm going to play Grasping Thrall. Um, but they were really cool at the FNM. Uh, they were just like, you know, like you don't have standard cards in your deck. Uh, you're playing a janky mill deck that is going to lose every single game. They didn't tell me that, but, you know, it was inferred. I, uh, <laughs> I was playing, like, I think, I think it's called Jace's Phantasmal or something. Like, if you, or your opponent has five or more cards in their, uh, is it five or ten or twenty? I don't know. Some number of cards in your opponent's, uh, graveyard, it becomes a five-five flying creature for one mana. <laughs> and I beat someone with it one of the games and they got really mad because they're like you shouldn't be at this FNM Friday Night Magic is 
like for standard like you're not even playing standard and i don't know they were they were really bothered that i was at the f and m which i mean i get it kind of but oh my goodness that is such a that's a beating not a 12 12 Do they draw the cards after they... Like... I don't know. Alright, I'm gonna kill this Amplifier. And I'm gonna play uh, Thrun next turn. Thrall next turn. Oh, please don't have like a hexproof thing or something. Alright. Really like a mortify off the top. I think that would be very good right now. Oh, they have a 6-6. Six, six. I think I'm just dead next turn. I may have misplayed. I was ranting about my FM experience. Anyhow, uh besides the person that got bothered by the fact that I beat them uh, overall I had a really good experience and uh, I met a few friends there uh, that I didn't know before they kind of took me aside and they kind of explained standard to me they explained rota uh, explained rotation and they uh, got me in with uh, gate crash and explained uh, how dark uh, dark ascension and Innistrad and absent restored and all those were uh, they explained how all those kind of fell into the standard block and then uh, coming in a month or two there was like a rotation period uh, where those would rotate out and new cards would come in. I thought that was really neat and I really think more people need to be like the people I met at my first time now. Because sometimes people come in with a you know, janky mill deck or they're going to come in with a draft deck that they got from you know playing limited and i think it's really important to you know be supportive of you know new players because without new players magic is not going to exist and with you know everything from mtg arena to you know expanding to like the new player audience um sure like some of the rotations are changing but they're they're really selling magic to a lot of people and I think what um, I think what Wizards of the Coast is doing is really good. I, I know a lot of people are kind of you know questioning and worried about uh, the direction Wizards is heading, but I think if we just kind of sit back, relax a little bit, and uh, let them do their thing, I think we're gonna see some awesome uh, outcomes in the future. That's just my uh, thought and rant, but I don't know. To take away from all that talking, uh, be nice to people at FMs and. Um, be supportive of new players and teach new players like why wouldn't you want someone to know like someone like I, I don't know you don't have to necessarily be the person to teach them if you like you don't like explaining things or if you're one of those people that take like FNM or like modern tournaments or like bigger tournaments like like if you if you take those really seriously and like you're not one of those people that go out of your way to like people like i get it but in the same sense like don't don't like be rude to them just you know be supportive create a friendly environment in every fnm should i be a friendly environment be the change you want to see in magic like imagine your first magic the gathering experience you know what was that like what made you stay like what if you went to your first fnm and like um especially for like all the females out there in magic right now like you guys are absolutely great and like every single place i go like i always like want to make sure everyone's having a good time and everyone's you know being uh, we're just going to discard a couple lands here and everyone's having a good time and everyone's you know being kind and being supportive and uh, there's never any um i won't say like foul play because that sounds like someone's murdering someone but like just I, I want to make sure everyone's having a good time and like you should always be comfortable like 
the trans community, the women in magic, like every every single person, no matter their race, their gender, their anything, everyone should just be equal. Everyone's there to have a good tournament, a good F and M tournament. Like just enjoy yourselves, guys. Like I can't stress this enough. Like so many people like forget to have fun at magic. And you guys have to. Like like this is a game, guys. This is like honestly a great game and an amazing game. Yeah, you know, everyone should have a good time. Like I, I see so many people like get like they literally like go through like burnout on magic. And I'm just like, why are you burn out on magic? Like, like it's a game. Like you don't have to play it. Like take a break. Like relax. Just like so many people get so competitive and it's just unhealthy sometimes. So just enjoy, enjoy your magic. You know, be kind to each other. Make a supportive environment. Welcome everyone in the magic, no matter who they are, and just enjoy it like mtg arena is free online go download it if you have a computer that can play it enjoy it and you know in a few years it's going to be on other platforms like i know wizards of the coast just like they said uh they released uh with an interview with the wizards of the coast like head manager person oh they just stole my messenger uh but wizards of the coast like head manager of arena said like uh we're not what was the quote from the interview like we're not currently looking into expanding to other formats, but it wasn't like they were never looking, like they're not going to ever be on another format. It's just at this time in the foreseeable future, they're focused on making, you know, this is still in the beta version of testing. They're making Arena the best they can do. And then from there, it's gonna be, you know, it's just gonna be, it, it'll be on your phone, it'll be on, other things you, you just got to give it time so i am ranting so much guys i'm, I'm kind of having fun playing arena and just being able to talk to you and I, I know i said guys a lot that's not like a general like male thing that's like a general like everyone thing so if i ever say guys i'm not referring to literally like male people with you know i i, I just mean everyone just want to clarify <sighs> All right, what are we doing here? Uh, losing. Kinda. We're getting behind. Our opponent kind of reanimated and stole our messenger a couple times. Because of that, they're using our afterlife. Our deck's kind of, deck's pretty good though. All right, so we're gonna, what are we gonna do? We're gonna ground one of these birds. And I think I'm just gonna Pass the turn back. I don't know, guys. Just have a good time. Enjoy magic. Don't forget it's a game. You know, there there's big prizes. There's big tournaments. You know, honestly, like, if you want to be a professional magic player, have a good time where you're doing it. Like, don't... Don't go through burnout. Don't, you know, don't forget to take a break. Don't forget to stay healthy. Because honestly, the players that are going to perform well at tournaments are the ones that, well, yeah, you have a competitive edge, but they're also the ones that, you know, take the time and, like, relax a little bit and, like, just realize, like, their limits. And, I don't know. Just... Oh, this is ridiculous. See what our opponent blocks with here. Ah, oh, and first strike. That's not cool. Kind of mindlessly played through like a match and a half. Why I ranted to you guys. A big shout out to Quarry and Aiden if you guys are watching this. You guys are the ones that kind of pulled me aside and was like, hey, here's how you play Magic. And I really appreciate you guys. You both are absolutely amazing. And you guys seriously 
seriously inspired passion. I wouldn't be where I am today without the two of you. You guys were awesome and are awesome. I don't think Aiden plays magic anymore. I think Corey dabbles in magic sometimes. Oh no, more cards coming back. Yeah, I think we're losing this game. Our opponent's just going really wide. Ooh, that would be the card to get us back into this. We can at least stabilize some. Our opponent's not gonna wanna attack. So you can activate this twice, or you can activate this once. Here's what I'm going to do. You can actually, actually activate one of these each once. Maybe I missed block there. Oh, he's actually activating the trampler, the trumpeteer twice. That's interesting. Okay, we're gonna take a damage here and just kill the trumpeteer. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Alright, I think we're gonna stabilize here. We're at least very close to stabilizing. Our opponent's gonna have to choose if they wanna play something or if they wanna. Right, they're gonna fill up their board state here. I feel very good about the position we're in. Our opponent can change that in a moment's notice, but we have a... Alright, that's not good. They can activate that once or twice a turn. Yep. If our opponent swings in with everything, are we just dead? So if I kill that token, make three, six, it's not enough. I know, but I was trying to see if I could win. So our opponent can activate that twice, hit us down to two, that deals one damage. So we go down to one. Yep.
interesting blocks from or interesting attacks from our opponent. So three. That's eight, but they're gonna gain three. All right. So we're not in the best spot right here. right here. If our opponent gets to untap, which they're going to, uh, we're going to lose. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. We get to gain four life here, which means we might be able to stabilize. Can't get too greedy with this attack. Uh, I'm gonna attack with Thrall here. as a Judith. Alright, so Judith is going to come down. Yeah, that's going to be the game. Ah, that's unfortunate. Thought we were going to be able to survive there. Oh, our opponent gets the return a couple things too. That's not Oh, our opponent passed. Yeah, we didn't draw her out. We're dead. We were a dead last turn. If our opponent attacked, we could only block this. And then we have no way to kill our knight right now. Yeah, we're very dead if our opponent sees it. We don't. We haven't drawn anything, but... Please hit us for damage. Okay. What is our opponent doing? Cut and gutter bones. Alright, I'm gonna help our opponent out. I'm just gonna concede. We have no way out of this, and I don't know why they're... I don't know if they thought we could sack our uh, creature to itself, but... Alright, that, that was it for us, guys. We had uh, four wins, three losses. Um, we do get a couple packs, though. So we're gonna open those now. We have three packs. We had one from our 15th winner, Daily Win. Alright, so we got an common wild card we have a carnival this pack's all right and the rare Ooh, we got a sphinx of foresight this is pretty good i can see that potentially seeing uh standard play coming uh, next rotation it's not seeing as much right now uh nothing too exciting in the commons and uncommons i think we have all these 
Another Angel of Grace. So that'll complete our play set of Angel of Grace. Uh, we just got one last draft. We have two already. All right, again, I think we have most of these. I don't think we have these, the Sentinel Mark. And I read that in the draft uh, when we were drafting, and it, it looked pretty good. Ravager Worm. That's pretty, uh, pretty cool card. I think it's played some of the red green decks. Uh, come down and fight something, or it can destroy a land with an activated ability. Uh, so some of those menacing, like Search for Escantas, um, you can kill that with Ravager Worm. So sideboard card in uh, some decks. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, check out our sponsors. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video. Uh, thank you for listening to me rant if you made it all the way to the end of the video. And hopefully I get to see you guys in the next video. So come check it out again. I hope you enjoyed our uh, first Magic Arena video. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Please go hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video. For your custom play mats, mouse pads, and more, head over to Inked Gaming. Use promo code CROCODILEMTG10 to receive 10% off your order. Today's video was brought to you by the wonderful supporters over at Patreon.